Welcome to the Did You Know podcast, where the focus is on rare diseases, how modern medicine is treating these conditions, including the latest breakthroughs in research, and how people cope with their diagnosis and healing. Your host is Dana Morrow, known for her video series on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook called Did You Know Ataxia Facts? 300 videos have been produced and seen in 17 countries to date. And now, your host, Dana Morrow. Hi, No Ataxia Nation. I'm very excited today to um, share with you some information I learned about Social Security. We're going to do a podcast series. There's going to be four podcasts in total. I have a very special guest. His name is Jonathan Rodas. He has a Master's of Business Administration. He is a National Disability and Medical Advocate for Rare Disorders. He is the president of the Massachusetts chapter of the Marfan, Marfan Foundation, the founder and co-leader of Ellers Danlos and CTD New England Massachusetts Support Group. He is the founder and chair physician awareness committee for Marfan and Eth Ethler's Danlos syndrome. John, that's a mouthful. I want to welcome <laughs> John Rodas. And um, I uh, welcome John. Thank you so much for have, taking this opportunity to um, educate people in oh. our audience about filing for Social Security. Thank you, Dana. It's my pleasure to help. I wanted to give people a little bit about your background. Um, this is going to be our kickoff podcast, and really the whole purpose of this podcast is to introduce the audience to you, to give you an opportunity to tell them a little bit about yourself, and also to give them a quick overview of the podcasts that are going to follow. So I would like to start off by saying that you have a disability yourself, correct? Yes, I do. And what's the name of your disability, and can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, originally, when I filed for disability in 2001, I really thought I just had Marfan syndrome, which is a connective tissue disorder that's highly degenerative and affects the, uh, it's a multi-system disorder. But years later, I found out I had more than Marfan syndrome. I had also Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is another connective tissue disorder. Marfan is the fibrillin gene, and the Ehlers-Danlos is the collagen gene. What connective tissue is, is uh, it's the tissue that literally holds everything together in the body, uh, organs together, um, different, different uh, areas, the bones, the joints, and the, it's, the tissue is very weak. So with Marfan's, it can cause aortic dissections and aneurysms and lung collapses and many other features. In Ehlers-Danlos, it uh, causes multiple subluxations and dislocations uh, really severe GI issues, gastroparesis being one of them, and a multitude of other uh, comorbid conditions and problems. It's unbelievable. And one of the things that I read about it, and I don't know if this stat is um, the most current, but I think that it is, is that it affects one in 5,000 people. I was really surprised to learn that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a stale st a stat because one in 5,000 is, is really was originally the gold plate for Marfan syndrome, but Ehlers-Danlos is absolutely more common than Marfan syndrome. It's just extremely underdiagnosed. Where Marfan is more known, uh, there's more information out there. Um, so, yeah, it's one in 5,000. I'd say it was probably even lower than that for Marfan's. Wow. I mean, so it's a, it's a relatively rare disease, just like ataxia. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So... Um, in your effort to, um, well, let me say it this way. Uh, one of the things that I know about this in knowing you is that it may not be evident right away when you meet you mm -hmm. to know that you have a rare disease. And did Absolutely. you find that that kind of hindered your ability to get, um, you know, when you were applying for Social Security? Oh, absolutely. Um, when I filed for disability... Um, I, had, I literally went into the office, and uh, I had, in my disability, I had given up a very lucrative career. I could not work full-time anymore. Nobody ever wants to file for disability. And I went into the Social Security office instead of doing it online. I figured I'd, because I'm a social person, 
And I walked in the office, and the first thing the gentleman said is, you're disabled, questioning me, because I just don't look disabled, so I'm not in a wheelchair, I don't have crutches. And that really angered me. I felt like punching the guy, uh, but I knew that wouldn't help me get approved. So I just went into uh, basic steps of saying it just came to me. I never thought of it before, and I said, sir, think about the last time you had a bad cold. You ached all over. You didn't feel well. You had very, very low energy. I said, I feel like that two days a week. And then I let him think about it. And the next thing I said to him was, uh, now think about the last time you had a bad flu. Not only did you ache all over and you had extremely low fatigue, you had barely could get out of bed to get to the bathroom, and you were dizzy. I said, I feel like that four to, four to five days a week. And his face was beat red. And at the end of the uh, interview, he thanked me for explaining what an invisible disability is. So, yes, not just me, but many, many, many other people are um, given that sort of an attitude that yeah. how can you be disabled? I don't see it. I don't see it. Correct. I think that there's a big mis- misnomer about disabilities. And I think many yeah. people in our listening audience have probably encountered something very similar. So you, you took that experience, though, and you turned it around. So can you tell um, everyone mm-hmm. what it is that you have focused your energies on these days? Sure. Yeah, I originally said when I was filing, because I did not like the process, I really didn't have any help. Uh, the organizations that, that dealt with my condition really had no disability support, which I've actually helped them do uh, now. Um, and I basically said, just, I want to help people. I told my wife, I, I want to do what I can to help people go through the discipline process without feeling alone the way I did, uh, ridiculed the way I did, uh, and persecuted the way I did. So that's how I started my advocacy career, was mostly just um, disability advocacy for uh, Marfan syndrome, because I thought, you know, I'll concentrate on that. And that's when I started getting people writing to me saying, my friend, got you helped to get her approved. I have Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Could you help me? Uh, or I have ataxia. You know, could you help me? I said, I can help anybody. It doesn't matter the condition. It matters the inability, because what disability is, is your inability to work full-time for a year or more. Right. And proving it is the, is the big key. Proving it is the big key, right. And in our, in our upcoming podcast, we're going we're gonna to talk about that in more detail. Mm-hmm. But for today, I wanted people to understand that you really have a passion for helping people. And what we're going to highlight is some of the things that you have done and some of the things that you have shared with others on how they can better their chances Mm -hmm. and get and have a successful outcome when applying for Social Security disability. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to talk about that now? Um, actually, I think at this point, what I'd like to do is just let our listeners know what's coming up in the next few podcasts, and then we'll get into more of the detail in the second and the sure. third podcast. So ultimately, guys, I wanted to let you know that um, what we're going to talk about in the next few podcasts is we're going to define Social Security disability for you. We're also going to talk about things called compassionate allowances, what are they, where, you know, we, where can you find them, and why is it important to know what they are. Also, we're going to talk about how to build a strong case. So John kind of alluded to that, like what are some of the things that you need in order to build that case, and who are your partners in that, what's the timeline to get approved, and what do you do when you are denied what are the important steps that you need to take? So we're going to be focused on those things in the next few podcasts. So for right now, I want to just let everybody know that John is going to be with me, helping to answer those questions and give us his expert advice on what we should do. So John, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, You're welcome, Dana. And I look forward to talking to you in the next few podcasts. Absolutely. Thanks for listening, everybody, and please tune in to podcasts two, three, and four. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you for listening in to the Did You Know podcast with your host, Dana Morrow. Please subscribe to this channel to hear all of the latest podcasts. We hope that this podcast has provided you with valuable information and inspires you to advocate for yourself and educate everyone in your circle. Remember, 
You are the expert and best spokesperson for your rare disease. Thank you.